Well, it's the holiday season, so Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone watching this video. And what a better way to celebrate than with a new solo run. And since it's the season of giving, why not make it a two for one special? And what's more fitting this close to Christmas than to look at Ford and Kyle, otherwise known as the Christmas Cavaliers of FE8. And I can already hear your comments say, but Kratos, we've already seen two full Cavalier runs with Franz and Emilio. And you would be right to say that. And that is why today we're going to put a little bit of a twist on it. And we're not only going to find out if you can beat Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones with Kyle and Ford, but we're going to figure out who between the two can do it the fastest. That's right, it's a race, baby. And the rules for this run are simple. I have to play on hard mode. I have a single healing item allowed per map unless one is dropped on the map itself. I can't use any exploits or cheat and I can't use the convoy to grab more healing items if I run out. And before we get into it, for those who are not familiar with the term Christmas Cavalier, it is another way to refer to the Cain and Abel archetype in Fire Emblem. Across the Fire Emblem series, there are certain recurring archetypes of character. And the Cain and Abel one usually refers to the two early Cavaliers you get in the game who are usually color coded to be red and green hence the name christmas cavaliers and in fe8 they take the form of both ford and kyle and one of them usually tends to favor stats like strength and defense while the other will favor stats looking like skill and speed and this is no different in fe8 so let's take a minute to compare both in their starting stats starting equipment and growth as you watch kyle murder his way through the early maps of this game and there is a reason you're seeing kyle right now we'll get to ford in a few minutes here as you can see in their base stats the previous premise stands true kyle is more favorable hp strength defense and constitution while ford is looking at a better spread of skill speed luck and resistance this makes kyle out of the gate a better frontline unit while ford will be more likely to double early on well actually that's not entirely true because of their starting equipment so while ford should be able to double more easily than kyle on paper the equipments they start with doesn't really match their strengths ford begins with a steel sword and a javelin the javelin might seem useful but they don't become great until a few maps in when bandits start to reduce the number and in terms of the steel sword itself it has a weight of 10 while ford has a constitution of nine so that means that by default by using that sword ford loses one point in speed making his speed seven which is the same as kyle Kyle, on the other hand, starts with an iron sword, which offers him no speed penalty, given his constitution of 10, and a steel lance, which is a minus 3 to his speed, because the lance weighs 13 weight. But then again, it won't come into play early on, so we don't have to talk about it too much. And the reason I bring this up is because I've always felt that both of them should have the other sword. It never felt logical to me that Kyle has the, the lighter sword, while Ford has the heavier one. But I guess it's something we'll have to contend with early on in the prologue and chapter one. Now let's take a minute to look at those growths. And to no one's surprise at this point, Kyle dominates in the same areas he did in the base stats, and the same thing goes for Ford. And here, let's take a moment to zoom in on each of their growths individually, because it will kind of showcase which one is generally more favored by the FE8 fan base. So first off, HP work, Kyle is a pretty formidable 90% that is equal for the highest in the game with Seth, Gilliam, and Garrick. Of course, if we don't count Murr, because all our growths are busted. And when it comes to his strength growth, he's most definitely well above average. While not being in the highest tiers, he does pretty good for himself with 50% strength growth. So, so far, we can see that where Kyle does excel, he does very well. When it comes to both speed and skill, he'll find himself rocking 40% in both. And I have to admit that tends to fall off the average for FE8, where the average speed and skill is probably closer to 45 than 40%. Characters in this game tend to have a very good growth in skill and speed as a general rule of thumb. But 40% in both is more than usable, generally speaking. Unluckily for Kyle, he falls a little short on luck. 
and this pun was fully intentional, and I believe fully deserves a like on this video, even if you didn't like the pun. But to be more serious, Kyle has the worst luck in the game with 20%. He shares that spot with Dusel, and of course, Null too. I feel like it's the second time I've made a video where I've said that Null has the worst in one stat. There's a reason I don't like this character. He can't stop catching L's. But getting back to Kyle in terms of his defense and resistance, I'd qualify 25% defense growth as slightly above average for this game as defense growth tend to just be low across the board. And for 20% res, I say it's around the average, but like maybe on the low side as again resistance if you're not a mage will find itself on the low side in this game generally speaking but 20 for res is a little under the average i i, I would have to say but now that that is laid at bare for all us to see, how does Ford function in comparison? Well, it starts off pretty well with 85% for HP, which is only a little lower than Kyle. So above average for sure. And in terms of strength, Ford finds himself around the average with a 40% growth. So not bad, but sometimes you might miss some crucial levels with Ford because of that 40% strength growth that does sometimes translate in lacking like one or two damage to one round opponents with that being said it's all very usable still so in terms of skill and speed well those are ford's supposed strength and while he might find himself a bit above average in terms of skill with 50 percent he's far from dominating that category like kyle did with hp there's a lot of very high skill growth in sacred stones and on the other hand in speed well i'd say he falls just on the average with 45. he even gets beat out by his brother franz who is kind of the real speed cavalier of the game while ford is the skill cavalier we could say which overall kind of gives ford less of a spot to shine when you think about it and when it comes to luck well ford is definitely better than kyle there but you know, 35% isn't anything to throw a party over. And the same as Kyle, res in defense while being reverse defense having 20% and resistance having 25. It's still, as we said, in the average, a little bit below average. It's still in the same ballpark there. So overall, looking at both of them, while it's true that Ford beats out Kyle in more places overall, Kyle just seems to have a more poignant edge in certain crucial areas. Having an easier time maxing out strength is certainly very valuable. While his speed isn't that much worse than Ford, only 5%, it really gives him a better spot given that where Ford truly shines is skill. And while having good skill is fun, it's nice for crit, and most importantly for hit rate, it isn't as crucial for Cavaliers because they usually have a pretty good grasp of the weapon triangle, being able to use both sword and lances, which then in turn gives them less of a disadvantage in hit rate, generally speaking, making it a far less valuable stat than I would argue strength and speed in the long run. But with that being said, we've looked at it, we thought about it enough theory crafting. Let's talk about the run, shall we? Or should I say runs? We'll switch off of Kyle for a second in here, take a look at Ford and how he handled the first few maps because chapter one is well interesting. So the first thing I do for Ford is I trade Franz's Iron Lance to him as quickly as possible. And then I send him on Brigitte. And as you can see here, his hit rate is in the 60s, but his damage of three is pretty low. So we have to be careful. Also, Seth is entertaining those units on the right side there just for fun. And we use our first Vulnary here just to be able to tank one more hit and Brigitte does eight damage to us so it's it's a lot of damage and we as you saw we just missed two hits there so then we go for the next hit we hit the first one we get hit by eight we hit the second one get a nice level up one speed that's nice enough but it won't help our damage at all we do dodge this one and Brigitte dodges us again so as you can see the big problem here with the fight for Ford as you didn't see with Kyle is while Kyle had the lower hit rate he did hit a little harder thanks to the steel lance 
So we end up having to use a second Vulnary to get our health back up because eight damage is a lot of our health. And we then get hit again by eight and we hit and then miss one. It seems like we're gonna hit one out of two for this here. And Braguette can be kind of a wall early on as we miss again and then get hit again, but he's never really a huge threat unless you're a pre-promoted or very frail unit. And I would not classify one of your starting Cavaliers as a frail unit as we have currently one HP and that's when things spice up we have one vulnerary left we're gonna use it here and hope for the best we can only tank one hit from this point on he has six hp if we hit both we can kill him and we miss both and get hit so very unfortunate there which means that we're gonna have to switch on our javelin which we hit one of those but 50 percent hit rate for two damage if you're looking at how much Brigette is healing off the fort is not necessarily a, a favorable position but we do get lucky there and hit two in a row and finally beat him but as you can see here ford really had in my opinion, a harder time than Kyle just getting through that first boss. We had to use all our vulnerabilities, and we it was a it was a 50-50 coin toss there. So comparatively, Kyle is a lot better early on, even with the low accuracy of the Steel Lance. Luckily in FEA, you quickly get access to a shop, so the less than stellar inventory problem gets sorted out pretty quickly. Since this game also gives you a bunch of funds to play with, it's easy to kind of just get your inventory in order quickly enough. Other than that, the early portions of the game for both Kyle and Ford are quite uneventful. We grab the few important items on Chapter 5, picking up the Draco Shield Secret Book and the ever useful Armor Slayer to help take care of the early armored bosses. We do hit level 20 on both these Christmas Cavaliers pretty early on. So let's take a look at what we have going for us in the early game. But before we get to that, I have a little announcement. And it's this Sunday, December 17th. To celebrate the holidays, I will be live with a very special Christmas themed stream right here on YouTube and Twitch simultaneously. I'll be live on that day for 12 hours. And during that 12 hours, my goal will be to see if I can beat FE6 fe7 and fe8 all in a row only using the christmas cavaliers in each of the three games so fe6 with allen and lance fe7 with sane and kent and fe8 with ford and kyle so you'll kind of see my process for these solo runs but live and in a christmas theme and also i guess it's a duo this time it's a duo run i have a bunch of surprises planned for that day so hit the subscribe button down below to not miss this awesome event and hopefully i get to see you all then and there back to the video on our level 20 ford and kyle we'll begin by examining each individually starting with kyle and overall he's looking okay nothing is too out of the ordinary generally finding himself on the averages if you don't consider the boost we got from the secret book and dragon shield but we see a little lower in hp with 36 but other than that his defense is looking pretty good above the average for sure which we like but nothing standing out other than that so just good average kyle it's kind of what we're, we're aim aiming for at least if we get average we're we're good we're gucci but now let's take a look at ford and honestly i'm kind of impressed because for ford if you've ever played sacred stones this is pretty good and overall we're looking at mostly right on the average or above average stats with his strength at almost 15 which is two points and a half above where he's most likely to stand at the same level and both his luck and res are also pretty neat yeah so now let's put them side by side and unsurprisingly much like their starting stats their growth turned out exactly like we laid out earlier kyle has better hp strength and defense while ford has better speed skill luck and res it's just kind of like it was written in a book at the end of the day, while Ford got the best growths, in my opinion, a lot more out of the ordinary than what he would have, Kyle still looks quite formidable with only, we could say, average growths. Now let's transition right into talking about promotion options and a little bit of the way I'll approach this race. Because Chapter 7, as you're seeing, is where you get the first Night Christ. Hence, we'll be able to promote starting at Chapter 8. So both of them have two options available to them. The fast-moving and generally more popular class, the Paladin, or the defensively responsible Great Knight. Before we make our choice, let's look at what both 
have to offer. First off, the Great Knight gives you access to axes, which also means access to the best strength based legendary weapon, that being Garm. But we'll get to talking about those later. But you do drop the six movement on the map, losing out on one of the best aspect of mountain units, which is the movement. And in turn, the Paladin gets the total of eight. So a lot of opportunities to move around the map fast. However, the Great Knight also gives a huge boon in terms of promo bonuses, which are all better or the same as the Paladins. And additionally, the Great Knight has better stat caps, which by the way, are the same for Ford and Kyle, since they are both male Cavaliers. If you remember correctly from our Amelia run, her strength cap was much lower because the GBA games determine the caps on class and sex. But anyways, the Paladin only beats out the Great Knight when it comes to its skill cap of 26. For all other stat caps, they are either equal or the Great Knight beats out the Paladin. In a traditional Fire Emblem setting, stat caps don't matter as much as you'll rarely be able to upgrade your units to max level in pre-promote and promoted form. But here in these types of run and solo runs, they matter a little bit more as you have to really start mid-maxing your unit as much as possible to sometimes make it work. But I decided to do something a little different here. Instead of going with both of them in the same class, because you know, it's gonna be the same for each, I decide that we should use this opportunity to figure out whether the Paladin is faster than the Great Knight by giving each of them the promotion which suits their growth the best. So Kyle will become a Great Knight and Ford, a Paladin. Let's see how it turns out. As we enter chapter 8, let's roll the footage side by side and you'll see that despite both classes being different, the way this goes will generally be similar both for both characters. As on chapter 8, we'll go and rescue Ephraim and his gang on the left side before heading back to the right side to go grab the angelic robe. As you've most likely noticed, the one big difference will be that Ford will move much quicker around the map, but he'll have a harder time to one round unit with slightly higher defense. But on the other hand, Kyle has a harder time to get to places quickly. Either way on this map, we'll pick up the angelic robe and and take out Terado quite handily on both sides using axes to get Kyle's axe level up and Ford uses the always useful armor slayer. Now it's time to look at the route split and we will go with Erica's route on both of course as is customary on these runs. The reason being when I hack in the units I switch them out with Erica so they become the main character of the story therefore I have to go with Erica's route and it allows us to compare better when we compare all units at the end of these videos. And chapter 9 will go a little differently for both characters. And it's because of this house on the left, we rarely get a chance to grab and pick up. And the reason for that is because the pirate AI on this map focuses the villages over fighting. So you can only get to the one on the left when you have eight to seven movement in a solo run that is. And most unit like Kyle generally have six movement. Therefore, this means that only Ford will have access to an extra defensive item in the form of one more dragon shield. But that shouldn't be too problematic for Kyle as he already has a pretty much decent defense stat line. Other than that, this map per usual will go off without a hitch and we pick up Amelia's speed wing and move on to Pablo's map. Here, I'd like to take a minute to start talking about legendary weapons. And this is mostly centered around Ford, given that for Kyle, spoiler alert, I'll pick up Garm, as the plus five speed is just too good to pass up. And it also has the highest might of the three, so power, speed, it's a hard combo to beat in Fire Emblem. But for Ford, the choice isn't as clear. And I know this is a discussion we've had a few times in the past, but it's always worth examining. So the only difference between these two are the might and the passive bonus they respectively give out. And both can be quite valuable as they are defensive passive bonuses. You watched my Amelia run, you probably remember I was going with a Dalma on the Paladin. And that was because her strength cap as a Paladin was rolling around 23. So we prioritize the higher damage. But here the stat cap for Ford will be a tiny bit higher of 25. And at these points in these runs, I generally expect to max out the strength given that we get two energy rings down the line. This means that using Vodafnir, we could still get a pretty good advantage despite its low might. But 18 might could also have a very good potential for us. So given that fact, we'll mostly focus on the passive and whether we want to prioritize defense or resistance. 
And you need both for the final chapter, depending on who your biggest wall for that character is going to be. Is it Leon and his extremely high damage magic, or is it the Demon King? And here, given that Ford has slightly better resistance growth than defense, I think the correct thing to do is to decide to level up our lances and use Vidofnir over Adalma. Because if we can make him kind of a good tank on both fronts, he'll be able to take on Leon well, and he'll be able to take on the Demon King well. While the extra damage would be nice, I think getting the extra survivability for the Demon King is a little bit more valuable here. And we always have the option of pure water when it comes to getting extra resistance we would need for Leon or any other pesky magic-based units. I'm looking at you, Gorgons. And also a little other fact, Leon, unlike the Demon King, you generally have a higher chance to be able to crit him because the Demon King can only be critted by a handful of units in this game. And Ford is, I can already tell you now, not one of them. So with that in mind, Leon is just an easier kind of character to at least cheese your way through. The mid game will be kind of a breeze with both characters, as it usually is in these run. And we'll grab the goddess icon from Tethys and the secret book in the chest on chapter 11. And we'll grab the energy ring from Yuin on chapter 12. And then on chapter 13, we'll make quick work of it by rushing down the boss as we usually do. And if it's your first time here and you think I'm going through these maps in the mid game a little quickly, let me explain why that is the case. The few maps between between chapter 9 and 14 aren't extremely interesting because half of them are route maps and by this point your character is so overtly leveled that nine times out of ten these maps won't cause any issues so instead of spending an extra 20 minutes on these in the video I just fire off the highlights and we move on to the later portions of the game oh and by the way on the note of it, if it's your first time here if you're not subscribed yet consider hitting the subscribe button it'd be super appreciated it will help me out a lot here for chapter 14 I'll I'll approach things a little differently for each character. With Kyle, I'll straight up skip the energy ring from the left side chest room. And the reason is we currently have 27 strength at level 15, which means we need to get one more strength level up to get our cap. And in five level with a 50% growth, you know, I'm pretty confident we'll hit the 28. When it comes to Ford, we are at 23 strength at the same level. But as a paladin, your cap is actually 25. Here, I'm much less confident in Ford than Kyle to get the right level ups in strength to be honest. So I'll make a little detour, grab the ring and just secure my max strength on Ford. Other than that, Carlisle doesn't prove too much of a challenge for either Kyle nor Ford and we move on to the infamous chapter 15 where for the first time folks on the big screen we get to have a stereo null death. Give me that sweet sweet synchronized double trouble death oh and you love to see it oh my god this just gave me the serotonin boost i needed to get through the winter but more seriously, here once again, we'll adapt our strategy depending on the character. When it comes to Kyle and his low movement, I'll go straight for the boots in the middle of the map and then book it towards Ephraim Gang to save them as quickly as possible. And by the way, I want to use this moment to showcase that getting the boots is not always an easy task. Because with characters like Kyle who have very bad luck, your chances of finding them in the sand are very low. And sometimes it's very tedious because it takes a a lot of turns of waiting and hoping and yes i bring it up because it's the case here let's just just take a look at at this Thank you. 
That just felt very dumb. Okay, let's move on to Ford, with whom we employ a very different strategy given his high luck. And right now, he's on the limit with his speed growth, being only a 21 at level 17. And we'd like that to be a little bit higher for the Demon King. So I decide to get a detour to go grab the Metastone before we grab the boots. The Metastone will give us a 5% growth in all our growths, meaning that it will give him a chance to hit 23 speed more easily, at the very least 23 speed. And why is 23 speed so important? Well, it's because it's the amount of speed needed to properly double the Demon King. Anything below that, you will not double them. And it's also going to allow Ford's other growths to get a little bit of a boon. So we would like him to just be the best he can for the Demon King. We'll clear the rest of the chapter handily and move our butts to chapter 16 as I take a minute to talk about their respective level 20. First off, chapter 16 is where we will grab our last stat booster, that being the Talisman. And in the pictures you're seeing on screen, for Kyle, the Talisman has not been acquired yet as I took this screenshot before chapter 16 and with ford it has because i took the screenshot after chapter 16. i know very confusing but just add plus two to kyle's resistance but overall comparing both of them won't do us much good given that they have different classes so different caps however i'm pretty pleased with how they both turned out both capping hp strength speed and skill and finding themselves either right on the average or above the average in all other stats so it is looking very promising for both of them but let's push ahead as both chapter 16 and 17 will go pretty smoothly one small note on chapter 17 ford gets to pass through a tiny bit quicker given that paladins can traverse hills while great knights can't so kyle will need to go around the top side which will slow him down a tiny bit compared to his counterpart but both will take out leo number one with relative ease we'll do a tiny pit stop on chapter 18 because for a rare time we first try it with both characters their general avoid being high enough to keep the hit rates in the low 30s allowing us a pretty consistent clear of this map with both kyle and ford so for once it's easy and we will take those we take those easy w's kyle even gets the added bonus of using Garm to avoid even more using the plus five speed at Grants. Next up, we have chapter 19, which will not prove much of a challenge either, as with both our Cavaliers, we will rush down Reef pretty quickly and take care of it in a couple of turns without breaking much of a sweat. Honestly, both calves are pretty decent for most of the game, and it goes quite quickly with both of them. And that fact remains true for chapter 20, where the most challenging thing will be not losing your patience, as you get surrounded by a million cyclops who have a million billion trillion health points. But luckily, we did grab a brave sword from the hero in the previous chapter, so it'll take care of itself pretty handily. And we move to Morva, who can't withstand the power of the sacred twin weapon, and that means both of our Cavaliers have entered the final stretch, the final map, where we'll take on Leo number two and the always terrifying Demon King. And here we'll take the time to refocus on one character at a time. And we'll start with Kyle. He's had a pretty good run so far, and he's the one I'm the most confident in between the two. So we'll start with him, and we'll face the same hurdles we usually do in this map, with the zombie dragon being the first one, because we're just a little short on damage to one round it, and we only get like 10% crit and not necessarily the highest possible dodge chance. So we'll need some luck on our side, and when we do end up getting that luck, we still have Lee Yon to go through and he also has a high hit rate on us and also hits like a truck so it's a little dicey going through here with pretty low crit chance once again and here we'll miss all our crits and, and yeah it's it's curtains for this one all right let's move on to the next run and start with the zombie dragon and we'll start by rushing him down again 39 damage times two with 10 percent crit let's hit it let's see what happens we hit the first time he hits us and we get a crit and clear him out pretty handily so we did take some damage there but we are at 24 hp which means we'll probably have to heal as this guy with the sword reaver hits us with 21 percent okay so we'll probably have to heal before we get to leo and we do heal right before taking out the spiders who 
who we take out with the Brave Lance Equip. It's a strategy I like to do for those spiders since they have a lot of HP and usually bad hit rate, you know, using the heavier Brave Lance. So using the Brave Weapon allows you to just open up that way for them to be taken out in one round and not have them just wait in front of you and take one or two extra turns you wouldn't want to take. But with that out of the way, let's get to Leon and the Gorgons. So as we usually do, we will equip a range weapon, in this case, a hand axe, and we will also use a pure water to attract one of the Gorgons to Kyle right here. We'll get attacked by the shadow shot from distance, 37% chance to hit. We dodge a second shadow shot, 35% chance to hit. We dodge. And then this one with demon shirt, 47%. We dodge it. That one was the scariest. By the way, if you stand one tile back more, you don't get hit by both shadow shots. Only one of them. So here, what we'll do is we will wait, use a pure water right in front of Leon to make sure our resistance is all topped off and equip Garm. The reason being, it's going to give us a pretty good avoid against all the Gorgons around that are going to want to attack us following up on Leon. And it's an assured good damage number, given that as he attacks us here, Garm does 21 damage, which is pretty good. He's probably going to hit with that. Yeah, he pretty much 73% and we get a crit oh my god okay we got an lucky 8% crit I was not expecting that I really just wanted to go with the consistent play and we we got lucky so let's go check out the demon king here 75% chance to hit we do hit for 32 a pop he does have 61% chance to hit us so most likely will hit us and he does and now we hit him twice in a row but if you look at his HP we we can kill him now we can kill him now. However, if we miss that 75% chance, well, we'll have to restart. So it's a tough spot to be in, but you guys know I'm a gambling man, right? So yeah, we're going to go for it. Let's see how it rolls. All right. First hit, we hit. Now let's dodge this. Okay, we get hit six and we hit the last one. Let's go. That's awesome. So Kyle is out of the way already. Third try is the charm and first time a demon king. Wow, we did get some luck on our side with one crit and not missing the end there. But still, it's part of the game. You know, luck is part of Fire Emblem. You take the luck you can get. But overall, it was a pretty smooth experience all the way until the end. But before we check the stats... To keep some suspense, of course, we'll move on to our friend Ford the Paladin and see how he did comparatively. And unsurprisingly, we face the same issues with Ford as we did with Kyle starting with the zombie dragon. Okay, let's go see how it looks. And here we'll try Vidofnir and you can see 25 damage, 65% chance for him to hit us and he two shots us. We do have a tiny bit of a crit chance, but what we'll do here is we'll, we'll have to probably use the spear and enemy face for him to come and attack us. We can maybe chip him. The spear does have some great, good crit chance on it. So maybe we get a couple of crits, even though it's just seven damage. We hit the first time, no crits so far. Okay. So that's not looking great we'll elixir right here of course we'll keep the spear equipped maybe keep doing some chip damage and maybe things go our way oh we get a nice dodge here still no crit and we're two damage off from vidofnir killing here which is unfortunate we'll still go for it we're attack we do dodge and we get a crit okay this is crazy this makes no sense by the way the luck on this try i i can't believe it we got two dodges of 60 plus and we did hit a crit on our vidoff gear we was like eight percent crit chance we take we take luck we've said it before we take luck but man, that was, oh my God. Now let's move to the following hurdle, that being Leon number two. And here, as you can see, our issue, Ford's damage. Here it's a pitiful nine damage on the killer lance, which if you've been watching these run a lot, you know we rely a lot on the killer weapons for Leon himself, which means that leveraging our good skill for crit isn't even that useful. And while the Dofnir is marginally better, it's gonna take a few rounds of fighting to chew through Leon. Oh, and we have another big problem. That being Ephraim, who has to deal with a death coil that kind of broke off from the entire group, which does happen from time to time, but I usually give him enough elixir to handle himself when that does happen in those runs. But this time I forgot. So it's kind of a race against the clock too. Either way, our, our luck from earlier will not maintain itself as we hit four times with the Killer Lance and somehow we don't crit. 
I guess what comes around goes around, you know what I'm saying? All the luck was legit just spent on the zombie dragon because we do not get another crack at Leon since... Well, Ephraim falls. Well, okay. okay. We'll, we'll reset. Let's not forget to give Ephraim's elixir this time. And, you know, in case that happens again, we should be good. But I guess our luck is fully tied to the zombie dragon. Because our next attempt, we also get a pretty favorable roll against this first roadblock. Yeah, so... That's, that's good, I guess. So once we clear the Death Goyle reinforcements and spiders, we're going to try our luck at Lyon again. But first, we must clear a path through the Gorgons. I'll use a pure water here to help tank one of the attacks. Normally, as mentioned earlier in this spot, you get hit by the one that's, that's going to move towards you and the one shadow shot. And they do have a pretty low hit rate, so we should easily be able to dodge at least one. And as I say that, we get hit by the first one. Okay, well, we should dodge this. Seems like I spoke a little too fast here. Uh, okay. I wanted to keep my elixir for just later so I could like maximize my healing, but turns out that was a bad idea. Okay, let's run it back, I guess. And here is our third zombie dragon. We'll keep going with the strategy of using the spear to chip him down since it seems to weirdly be working for us. And once again, we dodge him a bunch. And this time we don't even expand a single elixir. Holy heck. Okay, this is, this is good. This is a good start. Okay, so it's back to Gorgon time. We have our spear equipped. We pure water. Hopefully things should work better here. 26% chance to hit by the shadow shot. We get hit, of course. 38% chance to hit. We dodge that second one. We kill the one Gorgon. Okay, so we have a straight line to Leo number two. And here again, we check 13 damage on the Vodafnir and the Killer Lance is eight damage, 38% chance to crit. That's kind of good, but you know, it's not necessarily what we want. We will have to heal, however. That's kind of like, we're forced here to heal. So we just got to pick our weapon and, and enemy phase and, and hope for the best. And we will end up picking the Killer Lance, of course, as a huge potential for a lot of damage. And then we Elixir using our first one. So that's pretty positive for us. All right, Leo is going to try to attack us 73% chance to hit he does of course and we get a first crit okay that's nice no crit on the second hit but still a first crit very nice 28 percent chance to hit with it the... okay they hit with a shadow shot 16 per... 16 damage on 36 percent chance hit right after <sighs> okay 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 <laughs> i like to say that things get better from this point on and we make it to the demon king and everything goes great but that's not the case. Ford's damage, but most importantly is a void, or my luck I should say, are pretty bad there. And the difference between the plus five speed Garm granted Kyle is shocking here. Granted, I could have three more damage with a Dalma, but even then that wouldn't do much more, I think. The passive might help me survive the extra Gorgon hit, but even then it's a pretty flimsy situation. We even lose to a random death coil at some point, but I keep trying despite the game's best effort and I make it to the Demon King this time. And this is like our one chance. We have one elixir and a dream. Okay, bad start. Our damage is kind of low. And I want to take a quick pause here because for those who have watched the Amelia run, you may find the 19 damage on the Demon King, well, odd because while Amelia was using a Dalma for that fight, she did do 23 damage to the Demon King, but that's despite having two less strength than Ford. The difference between a Dalma and Vidofnir is only three damage. So something doesn't fit. It's not right. Well, it turns out I've been miscalculating things for the beginning of this series since the start. And this literally just dawned on me as I was making this video. I didn't even think about it while I was doing the run. But my mistake is that when I take into account legendary weapons, I only take their might at face value and do not think about the super effective damage calculation which actually makes a huge difference let me break it down real quick see Vodafnir has a might of 15 and in sacred stones the super effective damage for the sacred twins is only a times two which means that Vodafnir does 30 damage to a monster unit pretty good and that includes the demon king but Adalma has a might of 18, which if you times that by two equals 36. Hence, not only having a plus three power advantage against the Demon King, but six more damage, which can sometimes be pretty significant as we're seeing right now. All this to say, we could be doing a bit more damage and that I'm bad at math. I know, shocking for an Effie Duber. But with that being said, let's get back to the fight. 
Hopefully the 19 damage will be enough, but realistically that isn't the biggest problem here. This 60% hit rate from the Demon King is our biggest issue because as you can see, we can't seem to buy a dodge to save our lives. So when his reinforcements spawn, we move to the left to take them out and hopefully not get hit by a 12% hit chance crit killing edge. Which, by the way, is exactly what happens. And then the Gorgon also doesn't miss, leaving us with a whopping 1 HP. Forcing us to use our one and only elixir right away and robbing us from being able to tank that extra hit from the Demon King as we try to lure him away from the pesky zombie dragon. And of course, while we try to do that, we do not dodge the first hit. Also, quick positive note on Bidofnir. It does enable the strategy where you can tank a little bit more. So it's always nice to see with a plus five defense passive. But we also get hit by the second hit. And we are all out of elixir from this point on. We have to pray and we get hit for a third time. And to be fair, the odds were never really on our sides for this one. And after a little bit more trying, I don't ever make it back to the demon king and that's the point i realize this might not be possible with ford in this form and while i stress that his stats are really good for ford it's just not working and you may think the big issue is damage and while it is an issue lowish damage is generally something that we can work around as evident with the run we did with tana the big problem is the low damage paired with very bad reliability on avoid. Spider's speed being maxed out, our luck just doesn't seem to be high enough for our avoid to be even a little bit better. And that is considering that we already have pretty good luck on Ford. It's not like it's something that's lacking. He's doing good on that front, but it's just not working for us and with that i'll force myself to reset this run because praying for 60 percent dodge chances is the least fun thing you can ever do in this game and getting a dolmo will not be enough of an adjustment for us to have a more reliable ending the only thing that will most likely help us gaining extra avoid and extra strength well there's only one weapon that can do that and that's garm so that means I'll have to go a fully different route and also make Ford a great knight like we did with Kyle. Because that will just make things more consistent for Cavalier it seems. I'm hoping that it will at least. So we'll skip over most of the run because you pretty much saw it all with Kyle. And this video is already getting on a little bit in terms of time. But let's take a look at our level 20 Great Knight Ford to see how good we're doing at the very least. First off, this is before the Talisman on Chapter 16. So our res will be 15 instead of 13, which is good. But overall, nothing crazy. Slightly better res, same defense, and two less point in luck. You know, we're not looking better in those stats, but we did max out all the same stats we did earlier but we now have a 28 max of strength due to our you know class of a great knight and we have s ranked axes to be able to yield garm later on but it's looking pretty good overall and i'm happy with the results so let's skip right to the end because the run doesn't change this much from what you saw earlier and as you can see right now our matchups into the zombie dragon while looking a little bit better it's still a little tenuous he hands us a game over on the first attempt, but let's give it another shot, shall we? I will, you know, it's just, it happens. It happens with Kyle, so, you know, let's try it again before. It, it can happen. Okay, so he hits us. We just have to dodge this next one. What did we do? Nice, 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 nice. Now to fully take care of him and to finish him off, we'll fully disrespect him by using a hand axe because I'm, I'm petty like that. And now it's time to move on to Leo number two and see how it goes with a forward as a gray knight okay and here we'll try a strategy from earlier you will pure water even though we're not full hp try to attract one of the gorgons towards us to open that hole we dodge that shadow shot okay that's good demon search could hit if it wanted we do dodge and now we can move on to leon finally we have the killer axe here which does a little bit better than the killer lance and even 22 damage on this garm here is pretty good but we will however keep the killer axe equipped as it you know the crit chance is always very good we'll end the turn after we use a potion and see what happens 34 damage from leon 
will hit us, of course. And we get a crit from the killer axe. Okay. So we started off with a crit. We dodge a shadow shot. That's good. The demon surge here, 40%. We dodge it. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. That archer, I really don't care about. Okay, you please don't kill me. We get hit. 10 damage. Okay, stone, 25%. We dodge. We haven't gotten hit by stone this whole time, so that's good. 40% with the demon surge. Okay, we, we dodge that one. Okay, so Leon's in, Leon's in kill range. We do not want to take a chance here. We have Garm, but it's one damage off, if I remember correctly. We'll, we'll elixir. We won't take a chance. It's a for sure kill. If we're full elf, we can tank the one hit and then move on to the Demon King. We'll have one single little elixir for it, but Leo number two is down. And now it's up to you and me, Mr. Demon King. Let's see how it goes, but I got a feeling it's going to go pretty well. Okay, Garm, 32 damage. 54% chance for him to hit and 84 80% for us to hit. We hit him the first time. Does he? Oh, we keep okay. He misses. And once again, much like with Kyle, ladies and gentlefolk, nooblings all around the world, Garm comes through and we hit the first time we get hit, but it doesn't matter because we finish up for Mortis with Ford and Kyle. Wow. Okay, thank you for Garm, everybody. Thank you for Garm. It's crazy that they both completed in the exact same way too. It only took us two turns thanks to Garm. I guess we finally kind of do get our answer concerning what the best class is for the Cavalier for the solo runs, and it's the Great Knight. The Great Knight is for sure better in solo runs than the Paladin. I'm not talking about vanilla game, I'm talking about solo runs. The Great Knight clearly dominates Paladin, it's just way more consistent. And yes, it's because of Garm and the higher strength. So that answers that question, but what about the question of who can beat FE8 the fastest? Well, first, let's take a look at Ford here, who finishes with a more than acceptable time of 744 and a turn count of 340, because that's amongst some of our best times and the second best turn count overall. Holy crap, Ford showed up. But what about Kyle, you may ask? Well, drum roll, please. Kyle has a time of 812 and a turn count of 350. D3. Holy mother of unexpected situations. Well, I guess that answers the main question for this video. Who can beat F8 the fastest? And against all my natural instincts, I have to give it to Ford, which doesn't feel right. It really doesn't feel right. But Ford wins that race. He is the winner. However, before you leave, we have to place them in our tier list. And before we place them in the tier list, I think we need to contextualize certain elements of the run beforehand. First off, it's important to note that Kyle got screwed in this run. But not by me, by his terrible luck. Kyle spent 21 turns of only waiting on chapter 15 just to grab the boots. Meaning that Kyle, if you look at it, could have probably have had a better time in turn count than Ford. Could have. But I will not hold that fact against Ford. And that's because luck in the sense of the stat is as much of a factor as anything else in these run. If your speed stats screws you over at the Demon King, let's say, like it did for Dazla, well, that's going to dock points against your ranking. Well, that should work the same for any stats and that should work the same for luck in my book. But on the other hand, we did make Ford reset and we do count recess as failures towards the character. But once again, I can't believe I'm defending form in any way, shape, or form. Mecha is out there cursing my name probably. But the reset did not come from a deficiency on Ford's part, I wanna say, because I truly believe that Kyle would have run into the same issues had he been a paladin. Kyle would have even had it worse when you think about it because the avoid stat is based on both speed and luck, and Kyle had terrible luck meaning that it would have been even more of a problem to dodge in the late game. The Sacred Twin weapons available to the Paladin, paired with not an amazing strength cap, really puts it at a disadvantage compared to the Great Knight. So for this, while I do take into account the fact that we had to reset with Ford, I'm not gonna dock too many, I say points, but there's no point, there's no pointing system, but you know, I'm not gonna penalize for too much for it. I'm still gonna account the fact that he did reset, but not maybe as much as I would have for another character. Because while 
Kyle did have a slightly better chapter one than Ford. The rest of the run really went about the same when I switched class for Ford. And Ford had an easier time with chapter 15. So it's, it's kind of a wash between both of them for the ranking. But nonetheless, Ford had better time and turns and felt really good. And yet a really good final fight. Same as Kyle, but you know, just a little bit better than Kyle technically. So I'll have to give Ford a little bit of love for winning the race, since he never gets any from that Fire Emblem A community, and I'll place him just above Kyle and right over loot in the almost S, but at the reset tier, I guess we could call it. The really good times and turns and really good runs, but we have to reset tier or whatever you want to call it. A and Kyle will be a tiny bit above Amelia, who both had similar time and turns, but the only reason I'm giving it to Kyle is because the Demon King in early game went in his favor more than it did for Amelia. By the way, again, I repeat, this tier list is in no way scientific. It's just for fun. Don't take it too seriously. And I may end up readjusting things in the future future we never know but this video has gone on long enough so that is it for me i'd like to give a big shout out to all our members but particularly our tier 2 members brawler456 and destro yt thank you both for your patronage and your membership and thank you all for watching leave a like subscribe if you haven't already and i'll catch you guys this sunday the 17th or in the next video Buh bye bye